Bill, 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 Bill. Hockey rules. The Florida Panthers extend Bill Zito and have promoted him to president of hockey operations. We discuss how Bill Zito has turned the Florida Panthers from mediocre to bona fide contender. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Tuesday, April 16th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Rwanda Velez from the Hockey News. You can follow me on X at Monoman12. Follow the show account on X and Instagram at LO underscore F. L.A. Panthers, and shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. By the way, everyone, I hope you guys are enjoying the new intro here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Also, if you listen to multiple shows on the Locked On Podcast Network, you will see that Every show has gotten a new intro. We, as the host, get a selection of non-copyrighted music that we get to choose and different genres. Then I decided if you do, if you do follow me on Twitter or even Instagram, you'll see my music taste is mostly uh, in the rock and roll category uh, here. So definitely wanted to put that theme here on Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But I'm pumped coming into today's show because some great news happened yesterday in the world of the Florida Panthers. Uh, I mean, it's not surprising as far as the as far as Bill Zito getting an extension with the Cats and everything that has led up to this point as far as consistent success. I mean, yeah, the Florida Panthers when you uh, when you see it uh, five years five straight years in the postseason, but when for me. The Toronto bubble, unfortunately, when you think about where they were in the season and the direction that they were going and also their play in it where they got eliminated in four games by the New York Islanders. I mean, that wasn't a legit uh, contender for in in that in that year. And that was the final year of Dale Talon uh, being the general manager uh, for the Florida Panthers and all. And just when you think about what Zito has done since the day he, that he arrived, with, with the cats. I mean, you think about with him extending Mackenzie Weger and identifying a late round pick that he, he felt that a guy could develop into, into something train for Patrick Hornquist, bringing in that mean, uh, that mean, uh, that mean guy who's willing to get up to the, the net front and all that and battle it out and, and fight for the teammates uh, post whistle and all that. And create an uh, awesome to see that Hornquist is still with the organization and, and, and all with, with that. And think about the mess that he had to clean up with Dale Talon's uh, with with Dale Talon. Uh, I, I mean, tw- um, twenty nineteen, you see the contracts of Brett Connolly, Anton Strawman sign, and then what, what does Bill Zito do in a matter of a few off seasons? I mean, he gets rid of the Brett Connolly contract mid season, as far as also unfortunately trading a a player which didn't work out under the Panthers uh, regime with Henrik Borgstrom too. I mean, yeah, you get Lucas Carlson out of that, but uh, the, the point of that trade was mostly a salary dump for, for the Panthers. I mean, unfortunately the the Panthers also had to get rid of a second round draft pick uh, to get rid of Anton Stroman's contract. Yeah. He, he stepped up well when Aaron Ekblad was out due to injury in the 2021 postseason when when the Florida Panthers lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning in six games. But, I mean, it was going to be a year-by-year process. And even when he was trying to clean the mess up from the previous regime, the, the Panthers were still trying they're, – they're still they were still in a position to at least contend and take that next level because we were thinking at the time that it was it was a mediocre team that didn't have a sense of, di- of direction. Yeah, you – Talon hired Coach Q – in, in, into the mix, which Coach Q spoke publicly on the Cam and Strick podcast, but this is not the day to, to talk about that um, that uh, interview. But just wanted to make you guys aware that I am aware of that interview. Uh, but today's not the day to talk about that. But think about with uh, with Keith Yandel's contract and uh, and 
the fact that it was hard to move too. It had to make a hard decision right before the expansion draft too, when you wanted to protect the likes of a Gustav Forsling, Anthony Duclair, and all, and and you you were going to be put at a risk. And think about it, if if Forsling, I, I I was I was saying at the time, I thought it might have been Gus that could have been uh, that could have been the one selected out of the Florida Panthers for for the expansion draft. And look what's happened since he goes into an becomes a number one defenseman and gets an eight-year contract extension out of it too. And also for him, the 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 gambles that he's taken o- over the last few years as far as trading Jonathan Huberto and asking the question, can you win with him? And bringing a guy who, again, we talk about net front presence with Patrick Hornquist and the guy who's going to bring a little sandpaper. He, it, 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 it was also ripple effects even prior to Kachuk. I mean, you think of Sam Bennett who didn't work out in, in Calgary, didn't play a big role. Now that he's been your second line center and basically solidified that spot uh, outside of injury. Thankfully you have Anton Lundell, Anton Lundell, his very first draft pick for, for the Panthers when he came into the mix and, and bringing his guys and this being his team. And the fact that some of these trades for Zito, you hadn't had, they had, he had not had to pay a high price for them too. Bennett cost two, two second round picks. Montour cost the third and all. Yeah, Sam Reinhart and Matthew Kachuk cost first round picks, but those are guys that you know are going to contribute versus because be, because the draft being such the crab shoot that it is, you are you you know that you are getting you know you're getting certainty when you are when you're trading for those players. I mean, and look at Sam Reinhart, he'd never been a 40 goal scorer uh in in his career career. And and now now he's got he's had multiple thirty goal score seasons and and even currently at fifty five, which Sam Reinhart only needs five goals tonight in order to break the record. Only five, but you know, no big deal for that. But also the 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 ability to pounce when a, a contender like the Tampa Bay Lightning couldn't re-sign Carver Hagee and and all. And yeah, he was part of that run. And you bring a little bit of that experience, even though for Hagee's on the younger side of things. I mean. Verhage was the, leading the AHL in scoring one year, and he's a he's also another 40, 40 goal scorer, which which thankfully they're gonna they're gonna get back hopefully for game one and all that. And also we've seen the different sides of Zito as far as taking risk with Claude Giroux, Ben Chirot, and also the ability to t- take a step back too. We've seen the different sides of Zito, which last year you think about the the no moves at the trade deadline and Anthony Duclair being your piece to as far as your trade deadline acquisition which speaking of duke e- even though it was prior to the coaching change he had a 30 goal um 30 goal uh, season back in 2022 so he's been he's been able to get the best out of a lot of of guys and then this year being still somewhat aggressive but knowing what you have and had and don't have and what you didn't have too with, with your lack of assets this uh, this time around with getting guys like Vladimir Tarasenko and even Kyle Okpozo and all that. And honestly, the boldest move of them, of them all is the the uh, going away from Andrew Burnett when things could have gone off the rails after seven games. Andrew Burnett um, gets the Panthers to the President's Trophy and and even wins around. But obviously we saw how, how the Panthers' up-tempo style of offense got – got exposed in the postseason and then having making that hard decision to say, I think we need to move in a different direction. Even then I said, even in the middle of the season, even prior to the postseason, do not remove the interim tag off of Andrew Burnett. Don't, don't trap yourself. Give yourself the options if you need to tilt in a different direction and look what's happened with Paul Maurice being there. A lot, a lot of growing pains for the Florida Panthers in as far as, as far as getting getting used to the system and then now and then it it coming to fruition at the right time in the postseason prior to their run to the Stanley Cup final. Now the hunger level that's there for the Panthers and, and all, which now the, the Panthers have an, still have an opportunity to get the first place in the division, which we'll talk more later and, and all. And and also the looking over the goaltending excellence department too and and trusting those guys as far as as far as developing the goaltending and the, and up and down the organization as far as being patient with 
Spencer Knight. And also when you have the lack of assets and and using the ones that you have in order to develop them too, like a Mackie Seneskevich too, for Bill Zito, another draft pick of his, you're doing a mix of contending and a mix of developing too. And even with the little bit that you have, uh, Vinny Viola did talk about, um, I, I do want to read this quote um, for Vinny Viola right before we transition to segment number two. This is what he said. Quote, from this from his first day as a Panther, Bill has demonstrated his complete commitment to success both on and off the ice. He has worked steadfastly and tirelessly to establish a new standard of excellence for our franchise. The future has never looked brighter in South Florida, and we are thrilled that Bill will continue to lead the way. Close quote. And also, he will be continuing his role as general manager, but he will be taking on both the roles of general manager and president of hockey operations in a multi-year extension with the Florida Panthers. Exciting times as he is here to stay and here to, to go to work as far as trying to bring Lord Stanley's Cup to South Florida for the first time. But we're going to transition over to segment number two. We're going to, we're going to discuss more about the wild night in the National Hockey League and some practice updates for the Florida Panthers too as far as what the scenarios look like and what the scenarios look like as well across the National Hockey League. We're going to discuss that more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing and FanDuel is your best place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dogs. All on app that's super safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. It's Locked On NFL Mock Draft live on April 17th at 7 p.m. Streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. to hear who the local experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions with local college football experts and even the fantasy football angles. Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 p.m. Streaming live on Locked On Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon TV channels app. Back on this Tuesday, April 16th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Tuesday. So, you know what's really great? Not only with uh, with following the Panthers, following hockey, and, and just enjoying it as a fan, but also on, on a Panthers off day and, and just watching it from home, having multiple TVs up, watching different games, which I had the Pittsburgh-Nashville game on, on, on one television, Montreal-Detroit on the other, and unfortunately, because a lot of us don't have NHL Network, had to listen to Bruins Capitals on, on the radio on, on my phone, too, so watching two games on the screen and then listening to one on, on the radio uh, too. So it was just an eventful night of hockey. And then also the interactions between, between myself and people on Panthers Twitter, just, and, and, and these are games that don't even affect the Florida Panthers as far as, as far as positioning, the only teams that Florida, well, the Boston and Washington did, but I'm talking about Detroit, Detroit, Montreal and, and, uh, and the Pittsburgh game too. But even even the attention that that is brought to those games from the Florida Panthers fan base, it's more than just people who love the cats. People people are loving the game and it's growing the game. That's what what this is all about. It's more than just the Panthers in in South Florida when it comes to success here and and sustainability in in the region. And that goes back to the the success of Bill Zito. Yeah. War Memorial was a project that was that was in the works even prior to Bill Zito coming here, but that's a really great addition because now with fans being allowed at practices and morning skates and all, you, how how much of a buzz would there be in 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 those practices if if the Florida Panthers were still trying to get out of the muck of me- mediocrity too? To, so 
that's another that's another thing to consider because listen, I I will die on the hill of especially if you're in South Florida where a whole bunch of people move down here from different locations and they're not going to just adopt the team just because they move here. They're going to adopt the they're going to keep the team that they cheer for too. Let's uh let's be real when it comes to that. So, what's going to bring fans over? It's going to be winning. It's going to be it's going to be consistency. It's going to be community outreach too, which the Florida Panthers do a uh, pretty well at that especially with uh, a lot of uh sometimes on sundays you'll see players go to random uh sports shops and do autographs too uh so that's a that's also that's also something worth noting as far as the florida panthers of how they've reached into the community of of the fan base too and how the uh, and how you guys feel more and more connected with who these guys are because you guys look up to these guys so much too so that's that's another thing as far as how much the sport has grown in this region. So uh, Pittsburgh, they defeat the National Predators, which Sid had a, a sick wraparound goal. He's been carrying that Pittsburgh Penguins team uh, to, towards uh, towards in their pursuit of the final wild card spot. And honestly, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but I think Sidney Crosby deserves some heart consideration vote, not to win it but I do believe he deserves some because the, the, when Kyle Dubas traded for, um, traded, uh, for Michael Bunting and traded Jake Gensel, a lot of people thought that pack your bags, the season's over, but no, uh, Sid, the kid, he did not, uh, he did not want to, he does not want to go two years in a row with, uh, with not ma making the postseason too. So that's also, that's also, uh, another thing. And especially with his age and consistently doing it at, at five on five too. Uh, also, uh, the Los Angeles Kings lost at home. So, uh, but a loss of any kind of the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, tonight and the Nashville Predators officially clinch wildcard one and they can still, uh, Los Angeles and the Vegas Golden Knights can, can also still battle for the third, um, third spot in the Pacific division. Vancouver only, only needs one point in order to officially clinch the Pacific. So, a lot of strange matchups as far as uh, not strange, but lots of different matchups that could be once the regular season is over. So like we mentioned, uh, Washington defeats Boston two nothing and Boston only put up 16 shots. So it's also the question of how, how seriously our fans uh, are not fans, our teams taking the last few um, are, th are they more reliant on relying on health and all that stuff. And based on that, there's your answer as far as, as far as what's, uh, how that's going. And we'll answer as far as the Florida Panthers side of things a little later in the program. Rangers won the president's trophy. Isles clinched the third spot in the Metro. So it's going to be Islanders versus hurricanes. Once again, uh, two Montreal, Detroit, Detroit was down four, one and right and rose from the ashes. JT Confer and Lucas Raymond both scored two goals. Lucas Raymond gets 30 on the game time goal with the, with the extra attacker on, and then gets the, his 31st on the game winner too. Uh, and it's crazy the scenarios that are happening that can that are in game 82 with Pittsburgh doesn't play until Wednesday against the New York Islanders, which New York is uh, seed is locked up. So the the Penguins are in the position of, of where the Panthers were last year on that strange Monday in April last year, where the Panthers just needed the Blackhawks to win. So now the Penguins need need the um, the Capitals and the Red Wings tonight to lose of any kind because the because the Pittsburgh Penguins own the tiebreaker over the two. Washington, win and you're in. Uh, that Simple as that. Detroit, win and Washington lose a loss of any kind. And this is where it's crazy for the Philadelphia Flyers because they still have a chance too. They have to win in regulation be, uh, because if their, if their win comes after regulation, they won't own the tiebreaker over the Washington Capitals. So they'll also need Detroit and Washington to lose in regulation and also Pittsburgh to lose on Wednesday. So even if they win and both Detroit and Washington lose tonight, they would still have to wait one more day in order to have their um, spot clinched if that happens. So a high improbability when it comes to the Philadelphia Flyers. But why do why would they own the tiebreaker over the Washington Capitals? It, it would be the fifth tiebreaker, actually, that they would that they would own over the Washington Capitals, because the first one is regulation wins. Next one is regulation overtime wins. Uh, one is, the next one is total wins. And then they're the, 
the one the one that would have them the, the tiebreaker over Washington would be total points in between two of them and they've played three times this season and the head to head points would favor Philadelphia if they win in regulation so just a cra- just crazy scenarios as far as who's who's up for that final wild card spot and also i feel like the western conference i mean when you think about the the teams that you could see in the Stanley Cup final versus who in the east because for me I, I see only really four teams in the East who could make the make the Stanley Cup final. New York Rangers, Carolina Hurricanes, Florida Panthers, and Tampa Bay Lightning. Those, those are only four. Why not Boston? Why 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 not Toronto? Boston, I do think down the middle, I believe that that's going to be the biggest difference for them as far as how they're going to get through the the playoffs. Even if they do beat Tampa Bay and and run into Florida. And even if they make it to the, to the Eastern Conference final, I just think as push comes to shove, the, the center depth for the Boston Bruins could come, come back to um, bite them. Toronto, even if they beat Florida in round one, if they um, if they if it happens, if but we'll save predictions for later on in the week, even if blue line and goaltending and, and, and all that, that's really the biggest weakness uh, for, for them. Tampa Bay can turn it on anytime. The. Carolina, probably the most complete team in the Eastern Conference as far as who can score from the from the blue line and also their additions of Evgeny Kuznetsov and uh, and and uh, Jake Gensel too. And New York, if if Shesterkin plays anywhere like he did in 2022, and you get and Artemi Panarin doesn't go ghost and Mika Zibanejad, you could see that as far as them making a big run. But the only ones I don't see in the Western Conference making the Stanley Cup final is are the Kings. Very young, even though they do have a mix of veterans. Uh, Nashville, who's still in, in a little bit of a retail, and Vancouver, who, yeah, they're they're towards the top of the Pacific, but still haven't been here before and all. And I and yes, I do believe you don't. I believe in. I don't believe in the whole you need to lose to learn how to win too. This could be their year uh, too. But as far as who else is in the Western Conference and the experience, Dallas is poised to to make make a run. If if Colorado can get goaltending, they they could they could definitely make one. And who knows if Landeskog is going to return. Connor Hellebuck is going to win the Vesna. And if they get timely scoring from the Kyle Connors, the Mark Shifley's, the Nikolai Ehlers of the world, uh, and Nino Nino Ryder, he actually avoided a serious injury uh, the other day. So he is going to be playing in the postseason for them too. So up and down for, for that, the Western Conference is the hardest one too. So there's a little bit of a luxury that the Panthers do have as, as far as the, the, the road to it but nothing is guaranteed as you need to take one round at a time and all that for for the panthers and just focus on on that and that's what why we have one more regular season game to talk about uh right before it gets so real for for the panthers and then the the intensity the intensity just goes up 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 so we're going to transition over to segment number three we're going to discuss more about tonight's game between the florida panthers and the toronto maple Leafs. we're going to discuss that and more here on the locked on florida panthers podcast today's episode is brought to you by sleeper and we're almost past the regular season in the National Hockey League. And regardless of where the Panthers are in the standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially Daily Fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy contests. All you have to do is pick studs like Connor McDavid, Alex Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon. If they will record more or less their Sleeper projections like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Cats fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKONHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Segment number three here on this Tuesday, April 16th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So the Florida Panthers play the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight, a nationally televised game on ESPN. Bob Oshusen, Ray Ferraro, and Emily Kaplan will be on the call. 7.30 puck drop. 
So half hour after the Ottawa Senators and the Boston Bruins will pu- uh, drop the puck uh, on from the TD Garden on Tuesday night. So with the Boston Bruins losing to the Capitals last night, the scenario is really, really simple for the Cats as far as what they need in order to officially win the Atlantic Division. A win of any kind, plus the Boston Bruins lose in any fashion. Simple. Because the Panthers own the tiebreakers uh, for, for against, the, against the Bruins. And with the Bruins being the OT beneficiaries that they have been all this season, the regulation wins favor the Panthers. So loss of any kind for Boston and a win of any kind for the Florida Panthers. But uh, Paul Maurice did speak about how if there is something to play for, they will put their lineup out there. But part of me, I don't know how much I buy that. As far as that, because I put out a poll of how much emotional stock are you putting into tonight's game uh, up on X? Because I'm putting part personally for me, I'm putting almost zero in, in, in this one as far as the result. And 75 percent of you, 55 votes on, on, on this poll say, I don't care. Be healthy for game one. And then the other and the 25 says said, I want the Catlantic. That was literally one of the choices that I put in there. But. As far as that, the ultimate goal is to be healthy. And if we see, if we hear Paul Marie say, we're going to put everything out there in order to try to win, but then does something differently, he has the right to change his mind. And we are, it's 918 right now. Uh, the Panthers are about to take the ice uh, for morning skate. Don't know how many guys will take the option. If there, we might, hey, there might be a scenario where might we might not even know until until the Panthers hit the ice for warmups tonight too. Also, Carver Hagee and Aaron Eckblad are back in full contact jerseys. So it could have been disastrous a few weeks ago in the beginning of April when they both went out for an extended period of time, both in back-to-back games. But both are on track to, to, uh, to play in game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So what to expect out of the lineup? No Verhage, no Ekblad, and no Oliver ekman Larson for the Panthers after he went out of Saturday's game and, and all but. He's going to be well-rested, and he's going to be ready for game one. Something very minor, according to Paul Maurice. And also, Barkoff did not uh, pl- um, practice on Monday, and Paul Maurice spoke about how he tightened up, and it's just a rest day for him. Regardless of also the opportunity to win the division, I believe Anthony Stolarz will still get the start and goal for, for the Panthers. But if Sergei Bobrovsky does feel comfortable in or wants to get a little bit of the reps going, uh, and not have a full week off before game one, we could see that too. But also, the we've seen multiple times where Bob has gotten a full week off and he's and he's felt fresh. So it, we also got to think about the ability to put uh, to have Bob fresh for for game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs, which once again is going to start right in Sunrise, Florida, which uh, which is. Great to see as far as that and just getting that buzz immediately in, in, in the region too. So the Toronto Maple Leafs, their spot is locked in. It's also, uh, but also with what is going on as far as individual stats, Austin Matthews has 69 goals and he's going to be trying to get to the 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 70 goal club. Um, Connor McDavid got 100 assists uh, last night, uh, which the Oilers, manhandled the sharks um last time i checked um i fell asleep at nine two uh I believe that was the final but he got his 100th assist on 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 the night there so they're gonna be playing their full roster i mean they in their full in their practice they had um matthews marner bertuzzi there uh tavares nice and nylander in the second line so everyone everyone is everyone as far as the practice they look like they are in their proper positions as far as as far as as far as that and what they're preparing for. So we 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 could see a full lineup for the Toronto Maple Leafs on Tuesday night. So and they're gonna be they're on a front end of a back to back uh too for, for them. So we still don't know at, at the moment who is going to be starting for the Toronto Maple Leafs as they take on the Florida Panthers uh t- tonight. Uh also uh for also, excuse me, Kobe. Uh, I, Kobe guy also uh, just uh, tweeted yesterday so that that Stolars 
will be the starter. So my bad on 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 messing that up. Just saw that on my notes as I wrote it. Uh, but so you think about going back to how much stock to put into this, and why I also say zero is because reminder once again what happened with the Florida Panthers versus the Tampa Bay Lightning in the 2021 regular season. Florida wins both games in order to get home ice. And then right when the playoffs start, the experience of the Tampa Bay Lightning and winning a cup, and they win both games in in uh, in Sunrise, Florida. The first one, which I unfortunately was in the building for that one, was a late breakaway goal by Braden Point uh, off a turnover. And and nothing Bobrovsky could have done there as far as, as that and really setting the tone for that series. So, and, and, re- and let's also... Let's also remind ourselves that after the you got to take it one game at a time. It's a roller coaster of emotions when it comes to when it comes to the playoffs and all that. And we see how teams at home, if they if they drop a game, and how the firestorm can be on on X. And then a few days later, you see them, you see a team win on the road too and to take back home ice and that everything's all good. So we, it's just to remind ourselves that we, we, we are going to see some peaks. We are going to see some valleys throughout all this whole ride in, in the Stanley cup po- postseason. So when it comes to tonight's game, you are just hoping that you get out healthy. You, I am going to be personally looking for post whistle stuff as far as, what's gonna what's gonna happen what's gonna be well i can't hear necessarily what they say on the ice but the how much chirping there is going to be as far as like a preparation trying to put that intimidation to the other to the opposition which a lot of leaf fans have been hyping up ryan reeves the other day and then i I just reply uh posting his stats uh as far as that and he's also a minus 14 so he's not really contributing much as far as offensively and just is there to like fight guys too. I mean, yeah, people can argue the same thing about Yona Gajevich and Ryan Lomberg on the Florida Panthers side of things too. But so I, but I'm not going to be like, that's not going to be the first person that I tweet about when it comes to the, the Panthers against the Leafs. I'm going to be tweeting about the impact players and the guys who really make, who can really make th- them pay as far as the Matthew Kachucks of the world the Sam Reinhardt, Sam Bennett, and even Anton Lindell, who that line got going last year. So I don't know. Uh, maybe not hype up Ryan Reeves as far if you're a Toronto fan. Uh, too. Maybe hype up Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, who Mitch Marner has, is back from injury. He's played a few games now, trying to get his game going as far as that. Because for, for Marner, he is, uh, even though Matthews is the goal scorer and gets the goals, as far as 200 foot game, he's the best. He Marner is the best 200 foot player on that, and he's a winger uh, too. Uh, plays ri- in every single situation, and it, and is the probably the best um, as far as back check back checking and stripping the puck and uh, and finding the open open teammate too. So as as far as that, so that that a really important piece for the Toronto Maple Leafs to bring back to their lineup as far as injury. So we, it's going to be, it's going to be for, as far as this battle, d- try not to get too low. If, if the Panthers do end up and end up lose, losing this one and try also not to get too high. If, if, uh, if the Florida Panthers do end up winning this, you just got your, your, the business is to take care of it. That's really what it comes down to because also nothing is guaranteed as far as winning the Atlantic division, because you need the Ottawa senators to win in in Boston. Hey, stranger things have happened as far as that. I'm sure Brady Kachuk and Matthew Kachuk have ex- ex- exchanged text messages as far as like, "Hey bro, help me out a little bit. I know you're not going to the postseason, but hey, we're we're going to see you in our house, right? Uh too. Uh during the, during the playoffs, so you're going to support me. So, so do help help support me a little bit by getting a win on on the road and all that, especially because the Senators want to finish on a high note, especially with a coaching change and who knows what other difficult roster decisions that, that they're going to make come this offseason as far as trying to clear up cap space 
and what Steve Stales is trying to do as far as getting them back into uh, a contender because of the amount of untapped potential that there is in Ottawa. So going to be a fun night. Gonna, I hope you have uh, multiple screens up to watch both games uh, and, and all, and also to keep an eye on what's going on in the wild card race, because it is going to be, it's going to be intense. It's going to be a lot of conversation too, as far as that. Also, I believe the NBA play in tournament uh, starts today too. So it's, Oh, it's a big night in sports. The heat don't play until uh, tomorrow. So we, South Florida, we don't really have to worry about as as far as our team and our region uh, too, as far as the plan. So lot, lots of lots of it's a fun time in the, in the sports calendar, and it's only going to be ramping up more and more. But thank you all for listening on tomorrow uh, on today's uh, today's edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. On tomorrow's edition of the show, we are going to have bring Jacob Winans back to to recap this game between the Florida Panthers and the Toronto Maple Leafs from. Amer Bank Arena. But in the meantime, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steel Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.